This is a video showing briefly how to make a Zeta Potential Measurement in the Zetasizer NanoSeries software. Everything in the Zetasizer software works on SOPs. And so an SOP can be as simple as going up to this drop down menu, clicking on a Zeta Potential Test, and clicking Start. You would then be prompted to enter in your sample name, and then click OK. You can insert your cell into the instrument, make sure that it's oriented properly and clipped into the electrodes, and hit start. Your measurement would then proceed, and once it's finished, you would see a record pop up in your record view. To write your own Zeta Potential SOP, you can go to Measure, Manual, and then select the measurement type. In this case, we would be making a Zeta Potential measurement. There is another Zeta Potential Measurement called the Surface Zeta Potential Measurement. This is with a specific accessory to measure thin films or membranes or coatings. Normal Zeta Potential Measurements, you will click Zeta Potential. You can enter the sample's name or leave it blank. You can also enter in notes, which would give instructions to the user, such as fill the cuvette with 800 microliters of solution check for bubbles, place the caps on the disposable capillary cell, and insert into the instrument. You can tab through the different parameters and enter in the information, such as the materials refractive index. This one is not critical for the Zeta Potential measurement, but is more for record keeping. There is a small library of different materials refractive index, or you can add your own. Since it's not a critical component, you can just leave it as a default amount as well. The next setting is dispersant. This is more critical of a parameter. You need to know the dispersants or samples viscosity, refractive index, and the dielectric constant, which is important for zeta potential analysis. There is also a library here with different buffers and solvents, and if you need to enter your own, you can add that as well. The next parameter selects the model appropriate to convert electrophoretic mobility to zeta potential. There are two models built into the software, or you can create your own Henry function value. The temperature is also important. You can select the temperature that you would like to make the measurement at, and then also an equilibration time. Equilibration time can vary from zero seconds all the way to a few minutes, just depending on how different your sample is from the temperature that you would like to make the measurement at. The instrument automatically heats and cools with the Peltier around your sample, but we need to make sure that the sample that you put in comes to the exact temperature as the instrument. For example, if you took your sample out of a freezer, fill the cuvette, and you would like to make a measurement at a much higher temperature, maybe 30 or 40 C, you would need to build in a couple minutes of equilibration time just to make sure your sample comes to the temperature of the instrument for the measurement. Here are the types of cells that are compatible with SATA potential measurements. The most common for aqueous solutions is the disposable folded capillary cell. If you want to use organic solvents, you might be using our dip cell, and you can see pictures and product um, part numbers for each of the cells. For the measurement settings, typically you use automatic settings um, to run the sample where the instrument adjusts to how much voltage, um, how many runs to get good statistics of your sample. But if you're a more advanced user and would like to use manual settings, you can use those as well. The measurements are pretty quick, maybe 30 seconds each. So triplicate measurements are pretty common. Unlike a sizing measurement where it's a non-destructive technique, since you're applying a voltage to your sample, you can often cause some heating effects in your sample, which may disrupt the sample. So doing triplicate measurements might help you understand if you've made a change to your sample due to these heating effects. You want to make sure that this is not trending one direction or another during the course of these triplicate measurements. You can also put a pause in between measurements if you like. There are other advanced settings that won't be covered here. These are for the manual settings. There are many different types of data processing modes. There's auto mode, which means the instrument will select 
based on the conductivity of your solution whether it will make just the mean zeta potential measurement or also do mean zeta potential measurement and zeta potential distribution. If your sample is fairly high conductivity, I would suggest selecting the monomodal measurement, which the instrument would do in automatic mode. There is also another specific mode that's used specifically with the dip cell for organic solvents. This is the low mobility mode. Notice it's not activated until you select the dip cell. This is what you would select to make a measurement with a organic solvent. If you are happy with your SOP, you can save it with a unique name. And you could immediately run that sample, or if you'd like to create more SOPs, you can do that. Once you're ready to make a measurement, go to Measure, Start SOP, and select your unique name that you've saved your SOP as. Enter a sample name hit OK. Insert your cell into the instrument, making sure that you've inserted the proper direction as indicated on the box of the cuvette, and click Start. You can watch what happens during the course of the SOP in the green text in the bottom of the window, which will show which stage you are within your SOP. You can follow this also on the log sheet, which gives you more detailed information into the optimization processes of the system. Once you are finished, you will see a record populate in your record view where you can view the data.